Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam Amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I begin in the name of Allah the most gracious, the most merciful All praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace, blessings and salutations upon his beloved Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam Welcome to yet another reminder of our Ramadan series in this Islamic year 1443 after Hijrah. And today we need to encourage one another to do more righteous deeds in the month of Ramadan. But what better way of encouraging one another than to look into the lives of our pious predecessors and see what they used to do and how they used to plan their days so that we can emulate them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَخَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ That the best of the generations were the generation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions and the generation that followed after them which, are, which is referred to as the Tabi'een, the righteous predecessors, and the generation of Atba'u Tabi'een, meaning the followers of the righteous predecessors. Now, if we are to ask how their Ramadan was, we would find out that their Ramadan was such a Ramadan that brought or that reflected the true value of the month of Ramadan. Ma'al bin Fudail said that they used to ask Allah the Almighty six months before Ramadan to grant them long life so that they could reach the month of Ramadan. And they used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months after Ramadan for him to accept their fasting in the month of Ramadan. This was their situation before Ramadan started. And after Ramadan, they used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously for all the other six months that followed, asking Allah, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their Ramadan. Now, how do you think their situation was in the midst of Ramadan? And when we look at some of these pious predecessors and we look at their relationship with the Quran, the companions of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give special preference to the Quran during the blessed month of Ramadan. It is said that Uthman ibn Affan used to finish the recitation of the whole Quran once every day. So every day of Ramadan he used to make at least one khatam of the Quran. And their recitation was not only reading the verses, but they were reading, pondering, and contemplating in the meaning over the meanings of the Holy Quran. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu relates that when the last verses of Surah Najm were reviewed, that uh, do you then wonder at this recital? Do you then wonder at this reciter, which is the Quran, that Afa min hadha al-hadithi ta'ajaboon wa tabhakuna wa la tabkoon Do you then wonder at this recitation? This recitation, it was referring to the Holy Quran. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum who were staying in the Masjid Nabawi, the Ashabu Sufa, they started to cry. They started to cry. And they are crying. It got to the ears of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he heard them crying, he came to them. He came out of his apartment and he went to them. And he started weeping together with them. And then he said, he will not enter hellfire that person who cried out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those that will listen to the verses of the Quran and we cry the sahaba radiallahu anhum heard this verse 
do you then wonder at this recital that is the Quran and you laugh at it and weep not watadhakuna wala tabkun and you laugh at it and you do not cry they started crying may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the quran to touch our hearts so that we can be moved by its recital this is how the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum were and when we also read about sayyidna umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu it is said that when he read one day he was reading the quran and he was reading surah al mutaffifin and uh, he came to to another ayah of the quran wherein allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day when everyone is going to stand before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on his listening to this ayah of the holy quran or to his this reading of the holy quran he started crying he started crying so profusely that he could not finish his reading of the quran such were the blessed companions of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to reflect so the day when all mankind will stand before the lord of the Al alamin yawma yaqumu an-nas li rabbil alamin the day when all mankind will stand before the lord of the alamin alamin is the mankind the entire creation the jinns and all that exists so he was touched by this recitation and he started crying he was overwhelmed such that he could not read any more we learned of many 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 pious predecessors how they used to be during the month of ramadan and when we look at uh sufyan athauri he is related that he used to leave all other acts of worship and turn to the quran during the month of ramadan and sa'ad ibn jubair radiyallahu anhu it is said that he used to finish the reading of the entire quran in two days and we also look at another companion malik ibn anas that he used to turn from all sec turn away or run away from all other circles of knowledge when ramadan started and instead he would turn to the recitation of the quran he would dedicate much of his time towards the reading of the quran and zahri used to say when ramadan started indeed is the recitation of quran and the feeding of the poor that means that this is the month wherein we must read more and more and more of the quran and we must feed the poor it is said of aswad ibn yazid that he used to finish the recitation of the holy quran in two nights and we also learned of qatada that he used to finish the recitation of the quran every seven days and every three days in ramadan so in ramadan he used to read more every other month in their normal lives this is how they used to read the quran qadada used to finish one complete quran every seven days but in ramadan he would read more of the quran such that he would finish one khatam of the quran in three days giving around 10 khatams of the quran in the month of ramadan how is our recitation of the quran uthman ibn affan in ramadan was fasting during the day and praying and prostrating at night may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him he was also martyred whilst he was reading the quran so these are the pious predecessors their days were full of supplications and free from vain talks jabir ibn abdullah may allah be pleased with him said that when you fast then let your ears your eyes and your tongues fast from false statement and bad deeds and be calm and don't let the day you are fasting and the day you are not fasting be the same that means that when you are fasting there must be a difference from when you are not fasting 
the righteous predecessors would also remain away from sinful people and their gatherings. Let us Im imitate them and emulate them. You might have friends that are not Muslim or friends whose behavior, whose actions are not in accordance with the Sunnah and the teachings of the Quran. Especially during this month of Ramadan, you need to minimize your contact with them. Stay away from them. Indeed, as we find in the example of, Abdul, of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, even if they were invited to a wedding feast, to a wedding feast, they would leave the, that feast if they found something that was forbidden in it. They would stay away from the people of sin and innovation. In this way, their hearts will remain pure and clean. They will not be infected or infiltrated by the doubts and desires of such evil people. By mixing only with the good people and attending only settings in which the forbidden aspects are absent, they were able to increase their faith and keep their faith strong. In order for us to reach where they have reached, we need to do what they did. And when the time of Iftar arrived, they used to rest in feeding the poor and the unfortunate. It is narrated that Ibn Umar ta'ala anhu used to break his fast with poor people. And if a poor person came to him asking him for food while he was eating, he used to give him his portion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant these pious predecessors of ours the highest abode in Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to emulate them and follow them in follow in their footsteps. We see how Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu tried his best and to follow Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to emulate his senior Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That it is related the story of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who would observes that Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu would frequent a certain small house every day. And so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he decided to find out what was happening. So he entered the house after Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in order that he could see with his own eyes what is inside and know what Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was doing there every day after Fajr Salah. When Umar radiallahu anhu entered this little house, he found an old woman who could not move and had no one, and she was also blind. Umar radiallahu anhu was surprised by, by what he saw. He wanted to know the secret of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's relationship with this not known woman who was blind and old. So he asked her, what does this man do in your house? Meaning Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The old woman answered Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu and said that, I do not know my son. This man comes every morning and cleans and sweeps the house for me. Then he prepares food for me and he leaves without talking to me. When Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu died, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu decided to continue and com complete the care of the blind woman. And she said to him, did your friend die after he had done exactly what Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu used to do? And he said, how did you know that? She said to him that you brought me dead and you did not remove the seed from them. Umar radiallahu anhu crouched on his knees and his eyes filled with tears and he said his famous phrase that the Khalifs are tired after you O Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Should we cry for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu or cry for Umar radiallahu anhu or cry today about the feelings and morals that have collapsed and deteriorated? 
may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward their efforts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least inspire us to follow in their footsteps. Until we meet again in another coming episode, جَعَلَنَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ فَاتَّبِعُنَا سَنَهُ وَأَشْكُرُكُمْ عَلَى حُسْنِ اسْتِمَائِكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ